So I read Living Like Jesus by Ronald J. Sider. I think that's how you say his last name. And so I haven't really read many Christian books. Um, I mean, I've read the Bible, but this is just a, <laughs> it's just um, like <laughs> books that deal with like sin and how different people view them. So it was kind of an eye opener. I had a very hard time getting into it, but somehow I finally did. And also, side note, if you hear people talking in the background, my sweet mates and one of my friends is in my room, Princess Abby. Um, <laughs> so, basically, living like Jesus, I what I took away from it, the summary anyways, um, it's really how other people view sin and how, it's not necessarily telling you how to live, but it's, it's giving how people deal with different situations. So like in chapter three, I believe it was, it was talking about a man, I think it was the author's uncle. The author's uncle was married to this lady and she's like 29 and she, something happened and she had a mental illness and she got diagnosed with it. So they took her to a mental institute, not like where she was psycho or anything, but um, they had two little girls and he thought maybe she'll just be there for like two or three months, not a long time. She ended up being there for a very long time and like he would go up there and she wouldn't remember him or she would say something about back home or it was just like, just mental, she had problems. And so it was basically talking about how he viewed it and how he was mad at God at first. And he finally started thinking, he was like, it's not right to be mad at God because everything really does happen for a reason. And um, he learned from the situation and she ended up dying. But it just kind of talked about how he dealt with the whole situation and how he followed God and followed God's path through the whole, <laughs> followed God's path through the whole thing. And so I really liked that part of it. And then I think it was actually the next chapter, chapter four. <laughs> chapter four, it talked about a couple that were not married, they were not Christians, um, and somehow the the lady she got involved in a church and um she got saved and she got baptized and the dude that she was with also um kind of followed her influence or followed her like path and he also got baptized and saved so they were really involved with the church and um they they're like like head leaders of this multi-millionaire like um, million dollar company right now that helps churches and so I was talking about their journey and how they got in the right church and it it also discussed how there's like you have a church that is like it follows and it tries to put like put us as close to heaven and it tries to give us that um, atmosphere of how heaven is going to be like and then you have churches that are just full of drama and problems and you can tell that the spirit is not there because all that I mean it's just drama and I really like that part of it because I'm not used to seeing the other types of churches I've only been to like three in my life and it's always been like the right situation where it's a as like puts us in the good atmosphere and you don't really have a lot of problems I believe that there are problems in each church but if if the spirit is there and if um, Christ is truly in that church then you're not gonna have that many problems and I think two main things that I took away from this book, um, in one of the chapters it was discussing how it's really hard for us to make time for God. Like, I know I have a problem, I should read my Bible a hundred times more than I do, but it was just really talking about how we just set so many things in front of God and we don't make time to pray or take those 20 seconds to thank God for this not even a miracle just thank god for our hair what would our bald head look like if we didn't have hair or <laughs> or what would we do without our teeth we couldn't eat so that was one of the things that i took away from it and um one other thing let me think um chapter two it started talking about how we need to put god above everything and it kind of goes 
along the same lines as we don't make time for God, but um, ooh, I'm running. Oh, I hit five minutes. Um, we need to put God or Jesus before everything, before our phones, before our classes, before um, just everything. So, yeah, and I would give you a room tour, but I had a very bad morning, and I have outfits um, kind of just everywhere, so that's my back wall. Oh, my name's Presley Moody, and um, I'm a freshman, and I'm majoring in elementary education.